Uh oh. Dogs found religion. Call the police. I wasn't really gonna push religion, but I guess I'm alone down here, so I can nurture one in isolation. The thing is, maybe I should let her make a religion a little stronger part of what I normally do. Because usually in this game, I kind of ignore religion, or I put a token religion up just to sort of slightly resist someone else who's doing religion. But in this case, I wonder if I should use religion. Meaning, but the thing is, to, to really effectively use religion, you either need to be lucky and no one else is using it, at least especially not near you, or you want to push a faith bonus early rather than a practical bonus and then later the fact that you have all that extra faith will help you push the religion better you'll get a longer term benefit out of it it'll be more powerful with the spread of the religion but you won't get as much of an immediate bonus to your normal cities oh i do have a bunch of plantations Let's see sub plantation all these citruses. Plantations might be my best bet, actually, because of all those up there. Bananas. I said I was going to go culture route. Let's go culture. Yeah, look at that. And let's... Since the city's gone... I can't even liberate it. And you... Yeah, retreat back to some relative safety to heal. You get in there. And let's see, I don't want to keep this guy up here. I do want to settle over here, and I'm not going to let anyone dissuade me. So this puts me in a surprisingly powerful tactical situation. So look at what we got going on in this map. So I've got a whole bunch of hills and rivers and things, plus the, what's left of Egypt with Thebes there kind of in the way. And it'll be hard for troops to move in and come at me too powerfully. Uh, I have the Citadel, so I can heal and defend pretty easily. But no one's going to get around the salient that I've got here. At least not until Thebes falls. So I've got to be ready for this. I've got to see if I can keep Thebes up. The longer I keep Thebes alive, the better. And simultaneously, i got to get these builders in here and build roads on every one of these hexes. They'll look like redundant roads, but they're going to serve a really important purpose. This is going to be a war of attrition. Uh, uh, I don't know what he's going to do. Uh, if he takes Thebes, I'll be in a little bit of trouble, but it'd be, it would take a long time for him to actually get troops over all these hills and forests to be able to attack, say, my cities in the back. And I got that spare man coming up. But I don't want to lose any troops right now. If I lose any troops, I'll be in a little bit of trouble. So let's get these builders up here first. I got to finish all these roads going in all these different directions so I can have troops ready. And that Spearman is going to be back there to harass and slow down anyone coming in around the left side while I build up the right side. So luckily I do have plenty of builders. So if I build a whole bunch of redundant roads, mostly crossing those rivers, it means that I'll be able to rotate troops in and out over these obstacles pretty quickly and easily to maintain that defensive line. And Poland will not be able to do the same. They'll actually have a difficult time moving their troops around. And that sort of battle of maneuver is going to be how I hold this long enough to get something done. Now, much more importantly, so I got to get around on the other side of this lake. This is a really good place to build a city. And I don't see any troops sort of in the way. That's why this uh, horseman is up here scouting it out. If I get a city over here, especially right on that hill right there, then it can defend uh, the entire area. I'll have complete control of the lake. I'll be able to defend that city and protect it from attack with even a single troop hanging out in that hill. And that'll turn this into not just a salient, but an actual uh, long-term defensive position. That would basically be my lime. All right, so let's see the uh, situation here. 
So I do not have the most soldiers, and I don't know who has the most soldiers, but otherwise, I pretty much got control of this game right now, so I just need to hold off Poland and defend Egypt to let my industrial base and everything in my domestic policies build up. All right, so let's consolidate these troops. Poland's on their back foot right now. They took Thebes, but they don't really have an army to press the assault. So my debate is whether or not I actually try to take Thebes back and liberate it right now, or if I just surround and contain. The problem with that is that then he'll start sending troops in to fortify Thebes from the north. I assume he's got some troops up there. So I need to... Eh, I'm not sure how aggressive I should be right now because I really don't want to lose any troops. Attacking Thebes would be risky, so... Let's get these roads built here, especially the road from the Citadel. And meanwhile, let's just start moving all these troops up, and I'll have to make my final decisions based on what Poland actually does and how many troops they actually got coming up my way. I hope they don't have a navy, because I'm not really prepared for that. I have no defenses in Timoic. All right, this guy, I got to get up here to that good city spot. I got to get this up onto that hill there. One of those two hills. If I get a city up there, it's game over. I will win this war. Uh, it's kind of risky. If I lose this settler, I'll be in trouble. As long, yeah, I'll make sure I have a deal with Egypt. Egypt's not going to settle here while I'm busy fighting this war. So I got to sneak this settler up and into the top of that lake. And that city is going to be my redoubt in this war, especially if things go bad. If he starts making inroads or I start having uh, serious trouble, I could probably defend a city on the other side of that lake uh, indefinitely, even if I lost Parsegade. Parsegade? Parsegade? Parsegade. Uh, I definitely have to liberate... Thebes. If I took it, not that I would, because we have an alliance, that would destroy the happiness of my empire. So here's another decision. So because I'm at, I have this warfare going on, should I really double down and actually open up the honor tree, which I almost never do, uh, or should I double down on culture? I mean, I already did some culture stuff with the religion, so I think this is the way to go. This is the long-term strategy. That will, once I get to the industrial age, I don't think anyone else, I think Poland is focused on this military conquest. I don't know what the rest of the world is doing, but tourism is probably my long-term strategy here. Uh, if nothing else, it's a pretty good investment for the future.